Welcome back, everyone. Thanks for joining us so far in the adventure. We hope you've been enjoying it. Oh, we've loved it. Well, listen, now that you mentioned it. We've seen how ocean currents form and how they're influenced by the temperature and salinity of the water and how increasing levels of carbon dioxide in our atmosphere and oceans is having adverse effects on marine ecosystems. And that climate change poses lots of challenges that we urgently need to address. Mm -hmm. Climate change will mean altered weather patterns across the globe with different parts of the planet affected in different ways. There will be changes in rainfall patterns, increased desertification, melting of glaciers and ice caps, sea level rise and increased likelihood of severe weather events. Lots of important things. These will have implications for our health, food security and biodiversity, among other things. Our climate in Ireland is regulated by the relatively warm waters of the Atlantic Gulf Stream. Warm? Are you serious? Go in there in January and know all about it. <laughs> which protect us from climate extremes but leave us exposed to climate change impacts including rising sea levels at least 15% of the ocean is covered by sea ice for some part of the year due to global warming the polar ice is decreasing and the sea levels are increasing as we've learned our oceans absorb a large amount of heat from our atmosphere mm. due to global warming our oceans are absorbing more and more heat mm. and heat in the ocean is at record levels this extra heat is causing sea levels to rise Two of the main reasons that contribute to sea level rise are thermal expansion and melting of land ice, both related to global warming. Oh, thermal expansion is the expansion of water as it heats up. As water warms, its molecules move and interact more, causing the water to take up more space and global, global sea, sea levels, levels rise. rise. Due to the warming atmosphere and ocean, ice sheets and glaciers are melting, adding more fresh water into the ocean and global, global sea, sea levels, levels rise. rise. Our polar regions have both land ice and sea ice. Sea ice is ice floating in the oceans, like icebergs and frozen seawater. Land ice is ice on land, like ice sheets and glaciers. Mm. Land ice and sea ice contribute differently to global sea level rise. Let's investigate. Here we have two containers, one representing our land ice, possibly Greenland or the Antarctic ice sheets and mountain glaciers. And this is our sea ice, like the frozen Arctic seawater. Mm. We've placed some land in each as well that will, will represent our coastlines with some houses, marine animals and some giant cows. Jesus, what are you feeding them? Let's place some ice on the land in this one. And I'm going to put on some gloves because, well, look at Sirius's hands. <laughs> so let's remove this oversized tractor and let's go in with some glaciers. These can be glaciers or ice sheets. Glaciers are bodies of ice on land that are constantly moving, carving paths through mountains and rock made from fresh water or snow. Let's place some ice into the sea in this container. We're also going to place some contaminated ice with pollutants so we can see how they can make their way into the ocean as the ice melts. And then fill them up to the same level and mark the sea level. It should be the same in both and there should be the same amount of ice in both. Then we wait. In which container do you think the sea level will rise? This can take some time, so table tennis? Yeah. <laughs> Rising ocean temperatures can cause both types of ice to melt, but one has a big impact on coastlines and marine environments. You can see in both containers the ice is melted, but the sea level in our land ice container has risen significantly. Due to the warming atmosphere and ocean, ice sheets and mountain glaciers are melting, resulting in the addition of fresh water into the ocean and global, global sea, sea levels, levels rise. The level in our sea ice container did not rise. That's because the ice in the water was already displacing that volume of water. So when sea ice melts, no extra volume is added to the ocean and sea levels not impacted. Compare this again with our land ice melting. The ice was not in the water to start with. So when it melts, this water is added into the ocean, increasing sea level. There are more consequences than just sea level rise due to land and sea ice melting. Differences in salinity and temperature impact global ocean circulation. These variations can disrupt and threaten marine species that are dependent on the ocean environment. Mm. Fresh water is less dense than salt water, and warm water is less dense than cold water, 
as we've already seen in previous episodes. Ah, look, you're putting me on the spot here. These differences cause circulation in the ocean, which we now know is called thermohaline circulation. Over half of the world's population lives within 60 kilometres of the sea. And in Ireland, 40% of the population live within 5 kilometres of the coast. Most major cities in Ireland are in coastal locations. Any significant rise in sea level will have a major economic, social and environmental impact. Mm. Rising sea levels around Ireland would result in increased coastal erosion, flooding and damage to property and infrastructure. Won't somebody please think of the children! <laughs> and the big giant cows. The Irish National Tide Gauge Network monitors the sea level at 15 stations around the coast of Ireland. And these provide us with observations, tidal predictions and flood warnings. Oh yeah! The Irish Marine Data Boy Observation Network, managed by the Marine Institute in collaboration with Med Erin, provides real-time updates on weather and sea conditions mm. around the coast and supports accurate forecasts of extreme weather events. Mm. And scientists also use the information provided by Data Boys. The boys? 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 These yokes. <laughs> To conduct climate change research to understand how our weather patterns are changing. During ex-hurricane Ophelia... Oh, don't mention me ex! <laughs> during ex-hurricane Ophelia in 2017, waves were recorded at a maximum height of 17.8 metres by a boy on the southeast coast. Fair play to him. How would you go over, would you? And in 2014, the M4 boy, located 75 kilometres off the northwest coast of Ireland, recorded the largest recorded wave in Irish waters, measuring a maximum height of 23.4 metres. Fair play to you, boy. The Marine Institute is working with NUI Galway on a research project that involves the development of the combination of smart boys and time-lapse imaging to measure the storm impact and support the development of coastal flood and erosion defences. Sounds absolutely awesome. Yeah. Guys, thank you all for joining us on this journey. We hope you've learned more about our oceans and how important they are for all life on Earth. And I hope you enjoyed our demonstrations, experiments and activities. I know I did. Yeah. <laughs> and we encourage you to try them for yourself and hope you've learned about the great work that the Marine Institute and its partners do to protect our oceans. From us and the ducks? Ah, that was deadly in fairness to you. Wonderful! Just wonderful! Slaw no. I'm heading now for a dip of your coming. Goodbye! Miss you already! Dive in, enjoy, and make a difference.